Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, hi, I'm Lexi, and today we are continuing with Netflix's live action, Avatar The Last Airbender, episode six, masks. I am in some water tribe getup. Well, this is just my normal clothes. I just try to make it look like I'm part of the water tribe uh, with like this pearl necklace and this color of blue. I don't know, just, just having fun with it. <laughs> I think I would belong to the water tribe um, if I lived in that world. Even though I think, honestly, I think firebending, maybe it's not as like useful or whatever. It still looks really sick. So I would like want to be a part of Fire Nation pretty bad, but I know like in my heart, I probably would be a waterbender. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments below what you would be or what you would like to be or what you would like to be, even though you're probably something else. <laughs> All right, so anyways, um, Last episode was pretty sick. We got to go into the spirit world. There was a lot there was a lot of things changed, a lot of things added, and it seemed like they picked certain um spirit world characters and things that happened from both Legend of Korra, which is pretty crazy, and also uh Avatar from like book two as well. Like it seemed like they all they combined it all and put it into one episode in a way. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of characters, or there was a character, a spirit from season two, uh, the fog from Legend of Korra, just like a whole bunch of crazy stuff, which was pretty cool um, to see. And Aang got to say, have an official like reunion and goodbye with Gyatso. So I was pretty sick. Um, and so, yeah, I won't go into full detail about, I, I talked endlessly about the episode in the last reaction, but today we're jumping into masks. But before we do, make sure to give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. If you want to watch this video full length uncut, as well as early access to more of my avatar reactions, my Patreon link is in the description below. It's going to be on tiers gold and platinum. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Episode six, masks. Making sure no one sees the person we truly want to be. That's Zuko so before his scar. A time, but that uniform suits you well. Does it look right? I, <gasps> I think we're gonna actually. I think we're gonna see uh, Zuko how it, Zuko gets his scar in this episode. Okay. Okay. Now I know what to talk about. I remember my first War Council meeting. They were smaller mm. affairs back then, more private. Ozai, however, seems to enjoy having an audience. Your father says he welcomes different opinions. I'd advise against testing that. Best to observe and learn. <laughs> yeah. Why are we off course? Oh, Who changed no. the wedding? Lieutenant G, I asked you a question. We were given new orders. New orders by who? By me. <gasps> Zhao. We've been playing catch up for too long. I think it's time for a new strategy. You think I am the one hunting the Avatar? Mm. I am in charge of this mission. I am the commander of this ship. And I am an admiral. Admiral now. <laughs> I'll come by later to discuss a few personnel changes I'd like to make. Okay, that Until was quick. Can he do that even to like a banished prince? Resume course. She is not going to listen to him. Lieutenant, do you know what the punishment for mutiny is? I do. And that's why I can't do what you say. Mm. Admiral Zhao was very clear with these orders and what would happen if we didn't follow them. Oh no, Are you Zuko. Seriously? You're gonna let this spineless slug tell us what to do? We can't let him come in and take it all away, not after everything we've been through. That was a good Zuko tantrum. I liked that. <laughs> Zhao is not the one who deserves your loyalty. Zuko is. Loyalty? Mm. General, with all due respect, your nephew doesn't know the meaning of the word. Just like in the storm episode. He doesn't care what we've had to sacrifice because he's never had to sacrifice anything. And if you ask anyone here, they'll tell you. He may be a prince, but he's not our prince. Sir. Here we go. Drop some knowledge, Iro. I know Zuko has his rough edges. <laughs> and he knows far more about sacrifice than you can ever know. Okay. This could also be the deserter episode too. We haven't seen who I'm thinking. I don't know if they're gonna have him in season one or not. Crescent Island, very cool. Looks real. The moving camera is like very 
hard to look at. Oh, there we go. Greetings, my sages. I'm glad to see you. Uh, my name is Aang, and I'm here to visit the Shrine of Avatar Roku. You see? We know. <laughs> I'm the Avatar. We know. Oh. Wait! You're supposed to be men of peace! After him! <laughs> Where's my boy? There he is. I'm a friend. Wow, this is all happening very fast. <gasps> he did the thing. This will take us to Avatar Roku Shrine quickly. This is all happening so fast. <laughs> what is that? Ooh. I believe the Avatar represents not any one kingdom, but the whole of a unified world. <gasps> There's Roku. Great sage and the oh, I just got chills. Fire. These are relics from previous avatars that my grandfather gathered for safekeeping. They're coming. I need to make contact with Avatar Roku. He's the only one who can tell me how to save my friends. I will hold them off for as long as I can. Is he gonna fight them all? Was the only one who can provide balance is Fire Lord Osai. He will unify the world, not the Avatar. And you have no idea how powerful he will soon become. Mm. Step aside. I can't do that. Then Are they gonna burn him alive? Along with the rest of the non-believers. Come on, Aang. There we go. Who dares disturb the peace of the Avatar? Roku, come on now. Uh, it's me, Aang. <laughs> Is it not customary to bow before your elders? Okay. And to avert your eyes and hop on one leg <laughs> forgive me i couldn't resist after kyoshi told me that i need to figure things out on my own that i was not expecting that in uh, that intro to roku like being like that and so i'm just kind of like confused <laughs> and dazed a little bit <laughs> but what took you so long i thought you would come he looks to good though advice. after kyoshi told me that i need to figure things out on my own Sounds like her. <laughs> no, she has always been kind of. <laughs> I thought you'd all be like that. Aren't avatars incarnations of each other? We share the same spark, but we are our own people. Okay. I'm different from Kyoshi, just as you are different from either of us. But in addition to being a warrior, the avatar must also be a diplomat. So, we can solve the world's problems without hurting anyone? We can try. But there are consequences if we fail. I like this. Painful consequences. Oh, Sozin. But like Yoshi, I am here to aid you in your journey. Anything mm. you need. It has to do with Ko. Anything but that. <laughs> no, no, I never defeated him. I only managed to take something from him. Perhaps you come to return what you stole from me. What was it? What did you take? Huh? A totem that represents something that Ko needs and cannot forget. If you've read the comics, if you know, you know. Sorry, that, that threw me off. That's crazy. The mother of faces. Oh, okay. They're just going to reveal it. They're just going to reveal who that is. That represents something that Ko needs. Hold up. I got to write this down. Because if they're, um, if they're talking about the mother of faces... They're probably going to do something in this live action that was not in the animated series. And I will expand more on that at the end of this reaction. An ancient spirit who crafted faces for all living beings. She's basically a mirror from Attack on Titan. Longs for the same thing we all do. Family. Oh, and it, po it, like, it perfectly ties into Zuko's backstory with like all of this happening. Something he'd be willing to trade for. Thank you, Roku. I hope that you're able to save your friends. But the truth is, for the Avatar, friends can be a liability. <laughs> the Avatar has to make the impossible choices, placing the world's, world's needs, needs ahead of your needs. On that, Kyoshi and I agree. Trust me. It'll save you and the ones you love a lot of pain. Dude, oh. I actually like how they're they're combining this, both like Zuko and Aang's story. This is really sick. 
the relics. Oh, there it is. I didn't even see it there. Huh? Oh, it's uh, June. There she is. Oh! I got him. <gasps> that was quick. You're the Avatar, huh? Not sure what all the fuss is about. You need to let me go. I've heard the stories about how you're gonna save the world. Some of us don't need saving. So if you're smart, you just sit back and wait for the dust to clear and then pick through broken pieces for the leftovers. One thing I was not expecting in this live action is an intense personal conversation between Aang and June. As far as I'm concerned, the world's just fine the way it is. She's like the Han Solo of this universe. <laughs> you actually got him. Feel free to count. I trust you. You know why? Because you're so cute. <laughs> See you around, Avatar. It's weird watching June flirt with Iroh and suddenly the other way around. Do you know what it's like to have people depending on you? To have someone's life in your hands? I do. Then please, let me save them. No. <laughs> You couldn't have always been this way. What happened to you? Your Here we go. Forces are concentrated along the southern coast. Your Highness, I would suggest... Not you. Zuko. What would you do? He's letting him speak? What? Enveloping flanks, leaving an escape route to draw them out. They're earthbenders. Our tanks would be buried under rocks in seconds. You could advance a division here. If you send them into the heart of the forces, how will they retreat? They won't. But they'll be lost. You're gonna sacrifice them. Sacrifice is a part of war. What division do you suggest? The 41st. They're mostly new recruits. They're expendable. Hmm. Good. It's a terrible plan. Oh no. What did you say? Oh no. I said it's a terrible Plan! It's unworthy of a Fire Nation officer! You dare question- Enough! It? There is only one way to resolve this. An Agni Kai. Oh, crap. An Agni Kai. It's a little bit different than how it went in, in the Storm episode. He wasn't supposed to talk at all. I kind of like how they're making Zuko and Ozai's relationship a little bit more complicated than, you know, black and white. It seemed like Ozai wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt there by asking his opinion first and then being disappointed. A lot more messy, I would say. Oh, Zhao's troops, right? We'll take the Avatar over my dead body. Tempting, however. <gasps> Whoa! Yuyan archers. Yeah, the archers. Was gracious enough to lend them to me. This shouldn't be much of a challenge for them. <laughs> Aang's like, what is going on? Isn't this guy the prince? <laughs> All right, Zhao's definitely like his character in the animation now. Now that he's like an admiral, he's stepping into his Zhao-y ways instead of being all wormy-like. He's just straight up a douche. <laughs> Where will you take him? Hawaii stronghold for the night, then straight to capital city. I'm sure the Fire Lord is eager to take possession of his prize. Low key, this is Iroh's fault because he convinced to Zuko to work with him. <laughs> we'll have to watch out for the archers, but Zhao most likely stationed him by the Avatar. So Zuko, Hawaii stronghold is impenetrable. Going there would violate your banishment. But sooner or later, he'll make a mistake, and that's when we can make our move. Until then, patience. You can't do that. No, no, no. What is coming up here? I was right. Oh, I remember seeing this in the trailer and I uh, and I thought it was the place where Zhao does his like big speech about capturing the Avatar and Fire Nation victory, hoo-ha, rah-rah, whatever. But this next sequence, okay, the sequence in the animation was one of the coolest like choreographed uh, sequences ever in like <laughs> ever in the in season one and so I'm like 
so excited but also like very nervous to see how they do it in live action but we saw like a snippet in the trailer so <sighs> i'm having high hopes for this one Make it clear I spared no effort in security. This transcriber. You have to let me go. No, no. There are four guards, not three. Both his hands and his feet are shackled. <laughs> it's not my future I'm worried about. Really? <laughs> I mean, I'd worry a little. Oh, you won't be killed. If you die, you'll just be reborn. We'd have to begin our search for the Avatar all over again. So you'll live, though not well. <laughs> they did it <laughs> they did the thing that's crazy blow all the air you want blow all the hot air you want oh hot air change your fate little ad lib what are you doing <laughs> don't write that down <laughs> until now only one thing stood in our path the avatar and today, we've done something no one. <laughs> Their spears look so to cool. Tonight, we will celebrate. I'm like getting chills. <laughs> Where's the blue spirit? We need him. Where is he? <sighs> the mask looks sick oh it is identical it's perfect and this is why i got the lights ladies and gents this is why i got these lights up let's hope there's less fire spitting than on's birthday Ugh. my eyebrows only just grew back just some classic firebender banter going around the music they did it oh the blue spirit music is so sick too like that what is it like a flute or something oh man this place looks sick Gosh, the mask is so nice. Go, go, go. I cannot wait to see the swords. So the cool thing about this in live action is that Dallas, Dallas is pretty good at martial arts. Like he's really skilled, um, but they could get like an actual like pro swordsman guy to like do all of these crazy moves. I don't know if it's Dallas behind this mask. Someone let me know in the comments below, but um, the fact that like for this, episode specifically in these scenes specifically like they better come through with this because they had the opportunity to make this look really sick and i'm i'm so ready for it oh it's it's exactly the same that's identical to what happens he's on the ceiling that's crazy Uh oh. Nice. <laughs> Are they gonna do the music? Please tell me that they're gonna do like the. the. T -k -t -k -t. It's not like the exact like cha cha type of sound. It was like the. T -k -t -k -t 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 -t. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, they better come through with that. <laughs> For his research. <laughs> now is that loyal or faithful, sir? <laughs> the Avatar has escaped! The Avatar was there! On the wall! The Avatar! Stop him! Whoa! Whoa! Nice! Look at them work together. This looks sick. <laughs> the ladders. Let's go. Let's go. Oh man. Here we go. <laughs> the music. It's kind of the same. Oh man! I need 
need the avatar alive. Yep. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Open the gate! Sir? Do it! Now! Open gate! Alright. Do you have a shot? Oh. Take him out. broke yes good wow this is like shot for shot this is crazy the, mercenary and recover the, avatar. <laughs> the writers of the live action just knew that do not mess with like this episode at all <laughs> it's perfect oh cut him a little bit nicked him there he is yep you shouldn't try to move Got a concussion or something? I don't need your help. Have it your way. This is weird. They didn't talk before in, in the cartoon. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Might be a little personal. <laughs> Goat hair or rabbit? Your calligraphy brush. Your characters are so neat. I could never get mine like that. <laughs> Monks used to say lemur droppings were more legible than my brush strokes. He's like trying really hard to be his friend. <laughs> Goat hair. It's stiffer, more control. Mmm. A lot of the time when I was supposed to be meditating, I was actually sleeping. I always got caught. Probably didn't help that I snored. Whoa, he smiled. What? Season one Zuko smiling? So they're on your side. Why are you fighting them? They're not on my side. But they will be. When I capture you and bring you back, I if I catch you, I can go home. Then I can take my place as the rightful heir to the Fire Lord. Maybe you don't have to be like the other firebenders. You can show some compassion. How dare you? I'm the crown prince of the Fire Nation. I will be the example for all firebenders. And my father is a great man. Compassion is a sign of weakness. Oh no. Oh no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. He's knocked out. Come on, show it. Show it. Oh no. Whoa. Prepare yourself. You're here because you have no respect for our military. Even when they come up with terrible plans. My plans. Forgive me, Father. I meant no disrespect. Rise. No, please, Father. I Rise! Brother! Don't do this. He's your son. Whoa! We'll see. We'll see. Again, if you've read the comics, you know what that means. Rise and fight, Prince Zuko, so you can learn oh, some respect. Man. Oh, man. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Az Azula. Azula got the bang. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Compassion. He showed compassion. <laughs> Crazy. Ugh, that was much. M they didn't show it though. Soldiers are gone. They showed Sozin like burning someone to the crisp, but when it comes to Zuko, they still off screened it. So, Crazy. Able to Do you think we could have been friends? There we go. You're wrong, you know, about him not caring. The doctor says you'll recuperate quickly. It's a sign your body is strong. That's good. 
you held back today. Maybe you saw that as a sign of respect, but it wasn't. It was weakness. You must purge that weakness out of you. What the heck? Sometimes the weak can become stronger. Sometimes you just have to give them a chance. I have made a mistake. I've sheltered you, and it's made you soft like your mother. But since you seem unable to learn within the walls of this palace, perhaps the demands of the world outside will prove to be a better teacher. You will leave here immediately. And you are not to return. Until... Until you have conquered the greatest remaining threat to our nation's destiny, you will find, capture, and bring me the Avatar. And since you're so concerned with the 41st Division, take them with you as your crew. <gasps> what? What? Okay, that just gave me chills. Oh, man. So they were the 41st Division. <gasps> And you're all alive because of my nephew's sacrifice. Dang. Dang. That's actually really cool. How they did that. What? The mask got broken, but the blue spirit returns later on. I'm not going to ask you where you went. But in the future, nephew, I would appreciate it if you let me know whether or not you're still alive. There actually are a few of us who care about, about such things. <laughs> Attention! <laughs> Our prince has returned. Dude, no way. What's going on? <laughs> I must have missed you at music night. <laughs> Dude, I love how they do that. It's gotta go back to Perhaps the spirit world. It's because we don't want people to know how much they really mean to us. Momo! Which is oh, funny. they're back. Because the truth is, we would do anything for them. They're still trapped in there, though. Yeah. Ko's got mama issues, huh? <laughs> there they are! Right? Oh, it's all of them. Oh, the villagers, that's right. Oh, jeez. But I suppose it can be scary to admit you need people. Some might see that as a weakness, a liability. Good. Finding out someone you love has left you behind. You knew it. I guess that's why we feel the need to hide away and protect ourselves. Getting a lot of narration from Ira this episode. They're making like, okay, I'll talk about this after. <laughs> What's hard is knowing that sometimes the mask is who we really are. Hmm. Interesting. I really, really liked this episode. Zuko is one of my favorite characters of the series, his backstory, his family, the Fire Nation in general. Any anytime that I can see more of the Fire Nation, I'm gonna love the episode for sure. Um, and in the storm, now I can finally talk about this. I mentioned I was going to talk about this when we got Aang's backstory, but what I really, really loved in the animated series is the way that Aang and Zuko are foils of each other. And they show that in the Storm episode because we're going back and forth and seeing the destiny placed on both of them and seeing how they handle that destiny that, that was bestowed on them by others and the reaction from it. And it's actually pretty crazy to like really deep dive into that episode. Um, the Storm, I think it's one of the most well-written episodes of the entire series because of how these two compare to one another. You know, we have Aang who lives in a time of peace, growing up with monks, loving his life, having a, like an amazing father figure, Gyatso, who unfortunately the other, the other elders want to separate him and Aang and because Aang needs to be the avatar and you know, assume his role of this 
crazy uh, responsibility. And because of that, his first reaction is to run away and run away from a responsibility of a role that's actually very good and to be a hero, basically. And then the flip side, we've got Zuko in the Storm episode growing up basically ostracized by his entire family since his mom left. You know, his dad is not a father figure in his life whatsoever. And he's eager to step into the role that he's supposed to be in, so much so that he speaks out of turn with his father um, and ultimately gets burned and banished from it. And he speaks up against his father because instead of running away, he butts heads and does something good. He shows compassion, he shows empathy, he shows the traits of what a good leader should do for that. Anyways, just show, show that he is a good and righteous person and because of that, he gets punished for it, wanting to assume his role, and banished. And so you just have like the op- like these two characters, their their like uh, stories intertwine one another very very well. And it seems like they're both. The storm is supposed to show that both of them are now on um, different ends of the spectrum, but they need to you know figure themselves out. But here. They, they separated those two stories from, from the storm, which I'm not particularly mad about. Aang, you know, got to flesh out his backstory a lot more. It wasn't as fun loving. It was a little bit more, you know, he had this immense power and people were afraid of him. Kids his age were afraid, afraid of him. So he was a l- like ostracized as well. In this rendition of Zuko's backstory, his father and him have this more of like in a like a more of a relationship than we got in the animated series, where it's like he's pretending in the animated series, pretending that Zuko basically doesn't exist at this point. But in this one, he keeps testing Zuko to see what decision he makes and what he says. Uh, and he's a lot like his mother. Okay, and so now let's talk about Zuko's mom because she's like barely even mentioned. She, I don't even I don't even remember her being like barely mentioned a book one. I think I, I can't remember if in the storm because I know in episode Zuko alone that's when we get to see what his mom is like and the mystery shrouded behind her disappearance uh, and how Ozai like usurped the throne basically. But in book one, she's still kind of a mystery or just like not a part of the story yet. And she's still not, which is kind of crazy. Uh, But they're adding elements and dialogue and the undertones of them. If you've read the comics after, you know, the anime, like the series, the animation series ends, those, the expansion on Ko, the face stealer and his mother, the one who creates all faces. (laughs) and her connection to Zuko's mom and what happened with her. I cannot believe that they're adding like comic book lore. They, I know they they added a lot of lore from like already from Kiyoshi, um, Avatar Kiyoshi, cause she has, I think a couple books or at least one book about her that I haven't read, but I have read the comics at least, I can't, I know I read the comics for you know, creating Republic City, and then also the book about Zuko's, the comic book about Zuko's mom. So yeah, showing, so I'm I'm thinking, sorry, I, I'm just kind of word vomiting. So I don't know, I might be circling around a lot of things, but Zuko's mom is brought up in ways without actually bringing her up. It's it, in like where she is and her disappearance and her purpose and all of this. But the relic of this, even like when Roku, which we'll get into that, and Aang are talking, he brings up like the mother of faces relic that he stole from Ko, which is connected to Zuko's mom. And then the dialogue between Ozai and Iroh, when Iroh tries to stop Ozai from, you know, going into an Agni Kai with his son. He's like, he is your son. And he, he goes, we'll see about that. I could be reading too much into it, but uh, but the look that, that Iroh gave him after that makes me think this is also talking about Ursa, which is Zuko's mom's name, Ursa, and what she did <laughs> to Ozai to kind of mind F him a little bit. <laughs> and then 
On top of that, after Zuko gets burnt, what he says to his father, which leads to his banishment, you're soft like your mother. So we, we're getting we're getting some things we're getting some things fed to us from Ursa, and not only from the animated series, but also the the lore from the comic books about her disappearance. And I cannot believe they included that with Roku. So that's pretty crazy. And yeah, the relationship with between Ozai and Zuko is a lot more complicated and messy, and strange. It, it feels like Ozai wants really, really badly to see that potential in Zuko to, to turn out like the, like the rest of the Fire Nation, to turn out like him, like Ozai. Yeah, it's it, it seems to be a lot more messier in this than like cut and dry with Ozai wanting nothing to do with him in the animated series, which honestly, I am not mad about that because you can keep building on onto that, I think. And also, how messy is it gonna get with Azula too? <laughs> like that's gonna be crazy. But uh, touching on the rest of the Fire Nation being that way, of course Zuko isn't like that. You know, we know the battles that he's going in his own head, you know, how his mother is, and also one of the fire sages who stood his ground against the other fellow sages because he knew that protecting the avatar, letting the avatar connect to Roku is like the most important thing. And he knows that you know, the world's balance rests upon Aang's shoulders and, you know, sacrifice himself to fight against all the other sages. But June steps in, paralyzes all of them. So that was pretty cool. But no, um, Aang and Roku did finally got to meet. Roku's personality kind of caught me off guard at first, I'm not gonna lie. I was not expecting him to be making jokes and, and laughing and uh, when talking to Aang, but I think it's supposed to show the contrast between the Avatar personalities um, with uh, Kiyoshi being super serious versus, I guess, Roku being a little bit more more fun. But there's hints of his dialogue foreshadowing his story with his complicated friendship with uh, Fire Lord Sozin. Um, so they hinted at that a little bit. But, you know, he's giving more advice, we're getting more advice um, from the avatars to Aang about the role of an avatar. And I mean, to be fair, Kyoshi did say there's a lot of rules that avatars have to kind of uh, fit. And and she says that being a merciless warrior, a, fear, a fierceful merciless warrior or something like that is the most important one to her. Roku, I think, said being a dipl diplomat is a lot better trying to talk through things first without, you know, violence and force. Um, but that can sometimes bite you in the butt, which did happen uh, with Roku. So we'll we'll get to see that in probably season three, but they might show it in season two. I don't know. They're showing a lot of things from season from book twos and three, from book two and three in season one. So and then June after you know June captures Aang, you know paralyzes him, which did not happen in the cartoon by the way, but he did paralyze Aang. <laughs> she did paralyze Aang. They even had like a little heart to heart, and she's like a mercenary through and through. Like I said, she reminds she's like the Han Solo of the Avatar universe. You know, she's not a good guy. She's not a bad guy. She's just waiting for the dust to settle. To you know pick up on the opportunities of what's left over, that sort of thing, which honestly are some of my favorite characters in fiction. I think they're really cool. They they can decide either like which way they're going to do things. So you never know what to expect from them. Uh, but June through and through is just a bad B. Um, I'm not gonna lie. She's a fan favorite and there's a reason for that. And I think this actress did a great job with her vibes <laughs> from the show, so. Uh, except she's more flirty with Iroh than the other way around. Iroh's the one that was like, uh, like obsessed with her. <laughs> but maybe they didn't want to make Iroh so creepy as he was with June in the, in the cartoon. So they made June kind of approach him instead, which is still hilarious. <laughs> Seeing like Iroh get all flustered from that. There's so much that happened in this episode, guys. Also, the Blue Spirit. They threw in the Blue Spirit episode in there as well. That's why it was titled Masks. And to play off of Zuko's backstory on who he was, and even having those conflicted feelings and thoughts, even when he was a part of the Fire Nation, we get to see him embody the Blue Spirit, the mask that is actually who he is. Saving Aang from Commander Zhao for himself. But 
they made it even a little bit more complex. So when they escaped, you know, Zhao's uh, impenetrable prison or whatever that was, camp, base, they talked a lot more together than the animated series. We we got a smile. We got a smile out of season one Zuko, which was pretty crazy. And Aang was trying to be as friendly as possible to him, try to be friends with him as much as possible. Um, and we get to see more of that confliction with Zuko. The Blue Spirit is supposed to show that uh, foreshadowing a little bit more, uh, showing where Zuko's loyalty actually lies and it isn't necessarily with the Fire Nation. Uh, it is to win the approval of his father, basically, is his, his drive. So if, it, if he needs to go against, you know, the commander of his own nation um, to steal the Avatar himself, then it's not really about the Fire Nation. It's, it's just about, like I said, showing his loyalty to his father and that he's willing to do whatever he can to desperately cling on to his past. It makes sense to also add in his backstory to show that confliction conflicting confliction is that even a word <laughs> to show you know the push and pull what's right and what's wrong inside of him so we're getting a lot more of that in season one which is fine i mean this is a live action they're human beings you know going through this it can't be so cut and dry like in in an animation where you know time's limited uh didn't know if they had more than one season and now we can and now and we see the progression of zuko so starting that progression a little sooner in season one I have no problem with it. And I'm loving, loving the backstory of Zuko and the flashbacks in the live action. The dialogues between him and, him and his father, Azula standing there with the blunt bang, that was crazy. <laughs> you know, watching her brother get burnt, the little smirk on her face kinda. Iroh's relationship with Zuko even back then and how close they were. So very, very sick. And of course we got the archers. I pointed them out when, when uh, Azula was using art archery uh we saw them in the background i was like oh here we go they're including it they're including the blue spirit which i mean i already knew from the trailer but the 41st fleet when zuko spoke up about them you know sacrificing the 40 41st fleet in war uh in, in the battle or whatever and zuko spoke out it, the, the ones that are with him for the past three years are is that fleet so it's like a full circle moment Gave me chills. I'm glad they added that into the story because it it makes, I think it helps, you know, Zuko's character a lot more. And it also shows like a glimpse of what it would be like to a Fire Nation leader that can lead with the respect from his soldiers instead of fear. To have compassion, to have loyalty to your crew so that and to the point where they respect you and they want to fight for you because they know you're a good leader. They know that they care about you versus a leader who can only use fear to control people. Similar, that, I mean, that's pretty much Azula's whole downfall basically in book three, right? Is that kind of philosophy. So we're seeing glimpses of like, if Zuko did assume the throne, people would follow him out of respect and loyalty and not out of fear and control. So that's pretty sick. All right, that's kind of uh, my thoughts on this episode, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this reaction video here. If you guys liked it, make sure to give it a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. If you wanna watch this video full length uncut, as well as early access to more uh, Avatar reactions, my Patreon link is in the description below. It's gonna be on tiers gold and platinum. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.